Have you ever kissed a microphone before? That's why we had to have these cloths, because, yeah. boy. Uh, they like to use tongue. Hey, welcome to episode 79 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Severn. Hey, Nick. And Blake. Hey. And today we've got two guests. Ryan, returning guest. Hello. And Jake, new guest. Yay. Hey. Yay. <laughs> now, Jake and Ryan sit opposite each other at GGG, um, and they play a little competition game. I don't know what you guys call it. What do you want to... <laughs> they, they basically shake their hands at each other. Um, until one of them stops. Wait, and is that can... why you positioned us opposite each other? <laughs> All I'm saying is... Uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll just start doing it in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has just started. Oh, they're doing it again! They're doing it again! <laughs> <laughs> um, we were just talking about it earlier before the podcast, how yep. odd it is, but I love it. And we talked. I mean, we talked about it uh, when you were not here and Ryan was on about weird office rituals. <laughs> I don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What other weird office rituals are there? We got any? I mean, there's the goat head. Yeah, we yeah. we've talked about that in the past. I think I know. And now it is an, the weirdest. That's that's the thing. It's but the now there's an actual the, goat head. Yeah, I, I saw it for once. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so normally we talk about what we've been playing, uh, but we're gonna skip to you guys. I'm gonna just because uh, I think Severn's a little excited to talk about this. You guys have been <laughs> playing the. Uh, Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody can hear that, but someone's engine's just going off crazy yep. out there. Um, you guys have been playing the Labo on the Switch, right? Yep. We both got it. Yep. yep. Did you both buy both packs? There's like the, the variety pack, which has like the fishing rod and the piano and all this other stuff. I only bought the, the robot variety pack, right? Yeah, I only bought the variety pack. Okay. Ryan got both, though. I wasn't keen on the robot. Why? Because I'm quite tall, and I feel like I would break it okay. really easily. You reckon it's uh, it's got like maximum height? You think stuff? it's made for children is what you're saying. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying a smaller person. Their promotional <laughs> materials had a, has a full-sized, I assume, adult. Yeah, but Jake's got size 16 feet, so I don't know if he'll fit <laughs> what in the, the, what? <laughs> Holy in the cardboard smokes. shoes. Holy does. Look at those things. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan, have you put the robot together? No, I'm also not keen on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, why did you get it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I will build it, and I'll. it'll probably be okay. All right, well, why don't we talk about what's actually in the variety pack, then? You've got the piano, right? Yep. Uh, fishing rod? Yep. House? Yep. Anything else? Uh, motorbike. Motorbike. And a uh, little... Couple of RC cars. RC cars. Now I, R- RC cars are pretty cool. Are those driven by like the vibrator and the controller yeah. thing? HD vibration. rumble. Yeah, the rumble. Yeah, that HD rumble. <laughs> Not um, the vibrator. Yeah, so it's a different toy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, you just get two buttons, and you just you can individually control each Joy-Con so that each side vibrates. And basically, if you push them both, then they go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you hit either one, that's how you turn by by alternating between the the sticks uh does it work on any sort of incline i mean it's not like I, no. i've been like rigorously testing it under like <laughs> several conditions i put it on a flat tabletop and it worked pretty well yeah that's about my extent it would, as well does it work in rain <laughs> <laughs> um uh it would not work on carpet it, it's well, cool though because it's um no, not at it's, all. it's it's got a thing where like you can split it up and you can have um the two rc cars both going off one switch so if you've got four joy cons then you can have like a little demolition derby thing where there's like a little bell in the middle <laughs> and you hit the bell and it goes ding 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 and then it starts playing like battle music and then you basically just sit on the other side of the switch and just hold down the buttons and you just drive your uh, RC cars onto each other <laughs> and the um the console detects when one of them tips over and as soon as one tips over it like plays an explosion sound wow, and then cool. that's neat that's the match ending I have not done that that's yet really that sounds cool. Cool. awesome there's also when you have when you open up because what it does is the way it looks is you just hit like a secret button and it opens up like the inside Mm. inside like finger court inside and it's you can see all sorts of circuitry yeah and oh, shit and right. then there's like an infrared camera in there so you yeah. can actually see what the joy cons see because they have a camera on it 
Oh, that's um, neat. So you can actually drive the Joy-Con around, like, around the corner without even seeing huh. what's going on. It's kind of wow. cool. It's I also got an automatic mode that you turn on. Um, and basically, you can, you can see how it works through the infrared camera. When you put anything in front of the infrared camera, it starts putting up little hitboxes to say that it's detected that something's in front of it. And then the RC car will start trying to drive towards that obstacle. Yeah, I saw you put a, a video in our chat of it just it seemed like it was just going on its own and you were like putting your hand in front of it and then it was like turning by itself yeah yeah it's pretty cool that is cool what's uh, the speed on these things on, on these rc cars uh 50 60 mileage varies <laughs> <laughs> calling them cars is a bit of a stretch yeah, yeah. so like there's no wheels <laughs> like just just by the fact that like the way you build it isn't going to be perfect there's a bit of like unevenness mm. to it so like 100 percent chance when you build it when you hit both of the buttons it's not driving forward it's gonna it's, do a little bit it's of a going turn. on an angle and Got doing a bit of a, bit of a turn yep. so you actually get kind of um two frequency sliders that show you like the frequency that the joy cons vibrate at and you can like slide them up or down oh, mm-hmm. cool. it's and, a calibrate um, it. yeah you calibrate it basically and <laughs> yeah. oh, dude, i'm not very cool. good at it it's pretty it's it's pretty hard but basically you're calibrating it to try and make them both go in the same direction while still maintaining maximum speed I, I like yeah. that they included it because they knew. Yeah, they they, they knew it, it wouldn't be perfect. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I had to calibrate mine, my right one down a little bit. Yeah, that's that's how yeah. I won the demo derby because um, I was the the best mechanic at, uh, <laughs> calibrating my vehicle. Best calibrator. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about the motorbike because I didn't even realize that was a thing. Neither of us have built that yeah. yet. Oh, well um, then tell me about something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about the house. I built the house. Okay. Um, that was the second thing I built. What um, goes in the house? I don't understand the house. People. There's this. From what I can see, there's just one little, one little. Um, <laughs> Blake. Blake lives in an apartment. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't understand he doesn't houses. What is a house? <laughs> <laughs> now I've heard of houses. What, what is a? I see ch- them sometimes. What are they for? <laughs> it has a ch- chimney. Is that, <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. Gar- garage? Is that how it's pronounced? <laughs> garage? Gar- it's a Japanese chicken. word, I think. Right? <laughs> For garage. <laughs> now, um, you, you get this little house and you put the switch in the front and it basically puts you in a room where you have this little fur ball in there that's just chilling out in like an empty house slash apartment or whatever it is. And um, you build, in the building process, you build a button and a, and a key ignition thing and a crank. And you basically use those in the house in different ways. Um, those things were cool on themselves because the button is basically a spring mechanism where you, when you push the button, you can see like the cardboard on the other side like acting as a spring to push it back, mm. which is mm. cool. Mm. Um, the crank's got its own thing. And the key ignition is, is really cool because you, you've got like a, a rectangle that you hold and you turn it like a key. Oh, cool. And you can feel it reach the end and then you let go and it snaps back. So oh, it's, wow. The rubber stuff, rubber band stuff they've yep. got is pretty clever. So it came with its own rubber bands, right? You didn't have to yeah, go no, it. Yeah, no, it's got everything it needs. Okay. Um, Blake, you're very concerned about buying your own rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> sick of you it. You can buy like hundreds I'm of them of for it. a buck. Dude, I, man, we could tan- go into a tangent about me buying rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted like a pack of, a small pack of rubber bands to hold a bunch of cards, but uh-huh. all I could buy was like a giant bag of yeah. rubber bands. So I got so many fucking <laughs> rubber bands. No. How much was that bag? <laughs> Like ninety cents. Yeah, or something. right. <laughs> I suspect they they just cannot make the math work any other way. Yeah. They can't sell an individual band. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you start a rubber band ball. Yep. Oh mm. shit. Good idea. Mm. Um. But yeah, basically, like in the house, there are three holes, two on each side and one on the bottom, and um, with the three uh, things that you've built, the button, the crank, and the key ignition, you basically place those things into each of the holes in different combinations and permutations and depending on what you've put in the room it changes what the house is doing sort of so there are a few combinations where when you put either one of the three things in the normal room like one of them makes a tap appear and you can like open the tap and basically it just floods the whole house with water and the water looks really cool you can rotate the house and the the water moves around and you've got a little furball that's floating in the water neat um but a lot of the other combinations especially when you have multiple it puts you in different rooms with mini games hmm. like one of them is kind of like you're on a mine cart and you have to like jump over obstacles and collect um green crystals and stuff another one's a bowling alley another one is you're like so if you put the <laughs> crank on the bottom and uh the key ignition on the side you're put into this like cannon thing where you're like there's like one of those carnival games where there's three shelves mm. and there's like 
prizes on okay. each of the things. So you use the crank at the bottom to rotate a cannon hmm. left and right, and then use the key ignition to lift the cannon up. And then basically the point where you have it lifted, if you let go, that's where it fires the cannonball. So you can't, it's like a shooting gallery. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Um, and the prizes you get from this mini game all basically get flooded back into the house when you return to the normal area. Hmm. And you can feed it to the little furball. And basically the, the big foods change the primary color of the furball. Yep. The jelly beans change the secondary color of <laughs> okay. the furball. And the golden treats change the pattern. And they're like the ultimate prize. Yep. So you're telling me you pretty much got a Tamagotchi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it sounds like a virtual pet, basically. Yeah. Um, and but then it's a furball. <laughs> one, of, one of the rooms is basically you're put into like a, a wardrobe looking thing. And when you, like, hit the furball with this random thing that's in there, like, it creates, like, a lolly with a wrapper on it that represents the primary, secondary, and pattern mm. that it's got. So mm. you can keep up to, like, 16 oh, different yes. You costumes. can sort of save uh, a yeah. loadout yeah. of your furball. Yeah, so you're basically <laughs> trying to collect your 16 favorite costumes or something like that. Yep. And that's cool. How do you win? You don't. You just, you just play around with this thing. <laughs> so it's exactly the kind of game you'd like, Blake. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all cosmetic. Yeah, it's all cosmetic. <laughs> There's nothing my, to do. No. <laughs> just sort of float around for a while. And <laughs> yeah, so it's exactly like the kind of game I want. Yeah, cool. There's I, a I, cannon involved, you say? <laughs> would you say it's what No Man's Sky should have been? <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely. Um, so, Vern, you were... When, we, when Nintendo first announced the Labo... Mm-hmm. Um, you were skeptical, to put it lightly. Mm. Uh, how do you feel about it right now? Um, so I, I looked into it a little bit. Yeah. And uh, someone was very quick to say, this is not a game. It's a, it's a toy. Okay. And I'm very much in the camp of, yeah, it's a toy. Sure. And I'll ignore it because it's not a game. It's do you like Lego? <laughs> I do like Lego. That's a toy. Yeah, I don't buy Lego, though. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not really invested in Lego. Um, right. I respect Lego. I, yeah, I, 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 I do like Lego. Uh-huh. Is there are there toys um, that you do enjoy? Not not right now. I'm I'm too old for toys. When was the last time you bought a toy? A toy? Jeez, I don't know. I mean, you you got toys on your desk at work. You know, I was thinking about <laughs> buying a um, God of War X. Oh the, wow, the, the X, the prop X. That's, that's oh, a weapon. Cool. No, that's not a toy. I think you're. <laughs> well, well, I think it's a toy. Okay. I, I I'd have a lot of fun. Will it return to you on that? <laughs> if I throw it a certain way, I feel like it will come back to me. Yeah, it could bounce. But um, straight yeah, up. someone's face. I, I do <laughs> throw it straight up on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely had a lot of um, labo hate. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. You know, you say hate, yeah. and it really was hate. But it, it it was more just conjuring up like some some hate I had for Nintendo. That's yeah. a whole other thing. That's the thing. I think you you uh, when as soon as you saw that Nintendo was functionally selling cardboard. Mm. You got very upset. I, I didn't like it, man. I I, th- I think it it was just like I I perceive it as a misstep, and I just right. didn't like it. What did you think of um uh what was it called the Google VR card? I think it was called Google Cardboard, right? Yeah. Google Cardboard. Mm. What did you think of that? I, I liked it. What is <laughs> what is wrong with you, Severn? Uh, the, you, you mean the game company Google? <laughs> <laughs> um. So I guess my question is. Why do you like Google Cardboard, but not like? It was Labo. trying to do the VR thing, and it right. was like uh, everyone's got like a VR screen anyway, their phones. Sure. And so it was a like housing for their. <laughs> there wasn't the sure, same. But Are you trying to compare the two? <laughs> yes, I absolutely. Yep. Google is selling you cardboard. The, it's, that it's that really does a, something with the device you already have. It's a whole. Nintendo is selling you cardboard that does something with the device you already have. What's the difference? I, I can't. Like the comparison is, yeah. it's cardboard. It's made out of cardboard. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not. The, well, like, the comparison is, it's something you build that, that enhances a device you have. Well, the Google thing was more of just a holder for your phone, whereas yeah. this is like a keyboard, a house with actual games and activities. You're right. That sounds way worse. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm. I'm just saying they're yeah. not. You like I wouldn't compare the two. Okay, I I definitely would, but okay. that's fine. Yeah. Um. Have you, tar- have you now you've played her a little bit with the with the piano? Oh yeah, in the, yeah. In the cafe. What do yep. you think? It's, it's fun, I guess. Cool. Do it's you still? Fun, you still... I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't go out and buy it. It yeah, it's cool to see. Like if... it work with cardboard. Yep. You know, like it's 
cool to see folded cardboard made into a a keyboard. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's it is cool. cool. Like, like actually, yeah. the the structure of the thing was what impressed me the most. Mm. Um, I don't know what process you guys had to go through to actually build the thing. They, they take a long time. It's literally just felt and cardboard. Um, how long did it take you to build the keyboard, Jake? Um, just over an hour. That's pretty quick, honestly. Yeah. Well, the the recommended thing was like 120 minutes, and I was like, oh, no. That's why mm. I, I got I was so put off of doing it because I didn't want to commit two hours to building this thing. Right. And That's then for babies probably. <laughs> and then I did it, and I was like, sweet. Yeah. Well, did you have a good time building it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed they, the they, are, it. they are quite fun to build, yeah. especially at the more complicated mechanisms where it's just like, yeah. oh, crap, like just seeing how it's made and then you play with it and you're like, holy crap, I built this. Sort of like you didn't design it, but just yeah. like you, you're seeing it go from cardboard to like a functioning moving piece. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I thought it was going to be completely different. Like for the piano, I thought there'd be lots of like rubber bands and stuff like all connected. Yeah. That's just all off the infrared camera. Yeah. So I was a little disappointed there, but it works. It looks, <laughs> works got, really well. You should have got the robot then because that's all like like rubber band pulleys and no. strings and all sorts <laughs> of stuff. Too tall for the robot. <laughs> you, you can, can just make you, it. And... You can lengthen the string. Yeah. <laughs> and card for String comes in many sizes. It's not just a set. There's another, there's another material. That. There's another material called sellotape <laughs> and you can actually... <laughs> Double those. Is that um, Google Sellotape? I, I think Google okay. is. Yeah. yeah. Google they have a yep. monopoly on Sellotape. Yeah. Yep. It's, so is that one take all? Your phone to your eyes. Cardboard and stickers. All cardboard and stickers. There's nothing else in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, there's one rubber band. What's it for? It's for springing that button on the side up and down. Oh, the lever. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, did you at any point. Okay, actually, take me through the construction process because uh, I haven't looked into what you get when you buy Labo. Okay. Um, so. For this, there were six sheets. Yeah. And then you go on the switch and it takes you step by step. So it's all done on the switch. Like yes. there's a screen and it all does it talk switch. you through it. There's a really good yes. model viewer. The model viewer is really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, um, every step is in a 3D space and you can tilt it in any direction you want. So you can have a look at it from different angles. And then it takes you through every single fold for the same pieces. It reminds me of like the uh, Lego build just set, but made interactive. Yeah, that's really like cool. Yeah, so. That's actually a really good um, analogy. Yeah, you, you get a camera that you can move around the scene and rotate and zoom, zoom in and out. And the, the modeling process has like a forward button and a back button. So if, if you missed a step, you can hold the back button and it just reverses the simulation. Oh, that's And you, neat. you can drag the forward and back buttons and it kind of like stretches the button and it yeah. accelerates it forward and back. Mm. So you can go at whatever pace you want. And there were plenty of times where I'm like, I'm looking at a piece, I'm like, what what exact part is this? So I'll zoom in on it and like read the markings and compare it to the one I've got. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, built the wrong one. The only thing that bothered me about it is because a lot of those keys for the piano are exactly the same. Repetitive. It's just like it takes you through every single key. It's not uh, like oh, right. it's not like this key is the same as ten others. Yeah. Just do it all now. It's it's like this fold, this fold, this fold, this fold, this fold. fold. Okay, well, next key. it is it is for children. Yeah, I understand that, but there should be like a skip to next step or something. I mean, a, a child could feasibly. Like put five keys together at the same time. That's it's true. Not like an impossible task. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys like screw up at all while you were making it? Like, were there ever times where you're like, "Oh, I know what to do next," and you start doing things? I deliberately did not do that when okay. I was building it. Actually, so I didn't build the house. My girlfriend built it because she wanted to have a go at one, and I didn't say anything. But she was upsetting me because I could see that's exactly what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Where she was saying, I know what's going to happen. And she'd start going off on her own track and then she'd make a mistake. Because <laughs> yeah. some, sometimes it's like, oh yeah, this one's folded that way. So that means all the other tabs are folded the same way. Mm -hmm. And then and then the instructions would come up and be like, oh yeah, like you weren't supposed to fold that specifically because mm -hmm. that's folded the other way. And now you've made it a bit more flimsy. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a shame. But I, I deliberately, like, I was like, I'm, I'm going to pretend I'm a complete idiot. And I'm only going to fold something when the simulation tells me to. Yep. Yeah. I actually freaked out halfway through the piano. <laughs> like I'd got halfway through this thing and then it's like, just put the keys in the holes. And I'm like, my key doesn't fit in the hole. Oh no. Shoot. And so like I undid it all and there was one bit of cardboard I'd put the wrong way around. Oh wow. Yeah. So I was able to take it all apart and put it all back together and it still works fine. But like for, for like 10 seconds there, I was like, oh God, is it locked in? Am I fucked? Am right. I screwed up? <laughs> <laughs> The um, cardboard is locked in. There's yeah, no yeah. way. Because <laughs> well, well, you like oh, it got really intricate. But, now yeah. I hear that there are um, tutorials on repair. Oh yeah, we had to look at those at all. So 
when you open the software, there's like three different sections. One, which is make, which is like basically the model viewer for building it. And then play, which is you playing around with a thing. And then the last one is called discover. And that's basically a huge like documentation sort of thing mm -hmm. where it shows you basically how to use it if you want to play with it or how each part works if you're interested in, in learning about how the mechanical pieces actually function like for a, for a kid for a stem sort of thing and then there's a whole bunch of tutorials on how to maintain and repair and customize your mm. pieces to make them look cool so it's all great like because when i played with jake's keyboard i had no idea what i was doing so i opened up the discover section and basically just went through the whole like docs on like how does this piano function because it's got a whole bunch of buttons and levers on it and i didn't know how it works that yeah that was real cool hmm. that is cool has it made you want to come up with your own stuff no <laughs> does Not it support all. python programming it has programming in it yeah <laughs> we know this but that's more like a like a blueprint sort of thing like kind of what unreal has where you create nodes and inputs and outputs and that looks really cool mm -hmm. and i'll probably play around with it for a bit but it's not exactly my kind of creativity have you seen the guitar that someone's done yeah yeah it's like they'd rigged it up so one strum in one direction like played a series of notes mm. like so you could play a whole song by just going ting 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 like oh scrolling down once <laughs> right <laughs> scrolling strumming <laughs> that's the correct word yeah, you, I, I would you use just... a computer mouse to strum right and that's what the yeah you know, so it was a scrolling joke yeah you, you can see things where like they've got someone's got like this switch attached to a tennis racket where you're like strumming on the switch screen and then you use the joy con to kind of like change the the frets that you're playing on for each string which is sort of cool hmm. and um <laughs> there was someone i saw something funny on twitter where someone um reposted and nintendo was like you know be creative and make something cool and this guy just had like 24 joy cons on the table and when he hit one button they all vibrated it's like <laughs> <laughs> So there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of crazy shit where people are just taking the mickey out of it and just yep. building just absolutely, absolute garbage. But that's great <laughs> as well, I think. Yeah. Like, people are doing stuff. Yeah. Um, so these stickers are little white stickers, stickers I guess. Stickers, yeah. Um, I, I assume there's some, like, infrared reflectivity thing going on there, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's how the piano works entirely. It's all yeah. through the infrared camera and recognizing the stickers and whether they pop up and down. Um because yep. there's like for the keys, there's a barrier, um, and they can't the st stickers can't be seen. It's only when you press the button that the the back of the key pops up Lift and the sticker and is. And and so, yeah, that's cool. And I really like the. I mean, there's just a lot of ingenuity in the design of these things, which is just neat. Would you say you're sold on Lebo and you're gonna pick one up? Um, I don't know that I'm gonna pick one up. I don't think that this is. I mean, look, I don't really have place to put a bunch of cardboard knickknacks <laughs> um if i had kids in the house you put in <laughs> maybe one day i will mm. um yeah I, I can absolutely see myself buying this for them um because not only does it look like a cool thing for them to have it looks like a cool thing to make with a kid like it's yeah. a, it looks like something mm. you can do with your kid mm. um or with your girlfriend or no. with your girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. no. um i i did discover it's it's you don't just build it with an like as as a as an adult person. You you can't just build this with another adult person. <laughs> <laughs> Why? There's nothing there for the other person to do. Like, like the the way it works is because you're only building one thing at a time. You're holding the forward button or the back button, and mm -hmm. like you're just folding exactly what it says. It's, yep. it's a one to one ratio. <laughs> There's no like while you're doing this, I'll do that sort of thing. Yep. There yeah. There was there was at the beginning where basically. What I was doing while my girlfriend was building the house is I'd just pop out the pieces for her and then, like, yeah. pop out the little, like, scrap pieces. But then after that, I was like, you're good? Okay, that's, see ya. That's, yeah. all, that's also what happens when you're building with, like, a kid, though. Like, over Christmas... Uh, but you're supervising. Well, yeah. I... Kind of. I, like, my uh, nephew got, like, uh, some Lego stuff. And he was like, oh, help me build this. And so I started building it. And he was just getting in the way. <laughs> so you shoved him out of the way yeah and, uh, at one point i was just like just just let just watch <laughs> just watch me do this okay watch uncle blake yeah watch watch me do this right because everything you're doing is like mucking it up yeah, but, but the alternate is basically just i'm watching an adult person doing a fine job of it yeah yeah that's the experience you're and a child in this experience there's no reason for me to be here 
I mean, if I was doing it with a child, I'd be letting the child do it, and I'd just be making sure that they weren't doing anything You'd silly. be watching them just fuck up nonstop. <laughs> and just let them do it, but... Yep. Let's talk about the price. How much did you guys pay? Well, how much was the robot? Um, I, think, I think both sets were about 128 or something like that. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a lot of money. The variety yep. kit was definitely worth it, if you consider, like, how much time you spent actually building it, and then the amount of time that I personally have spent playing it. So you found the building process to be, like, a big part of the enjoyment for you? Yep. That's yep. cool. Like, it's not like you go to Ikea and you buy a bed. Building that thing sucks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's, right? that's, you yeah. hate that. Yeah. No, um, no build, building these, is, it, was, it was a lot of fun for me. That's impressive that the, the joy is building the thing. Um, so, for, like, the fishing rod, that one blew my mind because, you know, I was aware it was kind of like a thing where, basically, you've got a rod that you've built yeah. with a, an adjustable stand that ex- expands and closes, and it's got a string that's attached to, like, a seabed. Yeah. And I knew that you can kind of, part of it is like you turn a crank and then you like lift the rod up and you lower it down. Yeah. Um, and that the rope doesn't slack that you have, but I didn't right. understand how it worked. And um, the way it works is you kind of make, you build yourself a little spool, which is like a cylinder with, with two big circles on the end. And yep. then you wrap the rope around it. And the way that goes into the seabed is that you've got two rubber bands on either side of the spool. And then you slip that onto the bottom of the box. And so what happens is when you lift the rod up, it um, unrolls the spool and then twists up the rubber bands. Right. It works mm. like uh, <laughs> it creates tension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, cre- it creates like a tension in the rubber bands, yeah. and then when yeah. you lower the rod, it releases the rubber bands so and then rolls the spool back, back up. up. Yeah. And just looking at that, I was like, "Holy crap! That's insane!" Like, I had no idea how that was gonna work. Mm. Like, I'm I'm not exactly the kind of person that like, plays around with this kind of shit often, and I was just like, "That's mind blowing that it works that way," and that I built it and it works, because <laughs> um. Being yeah. a programmer, it definitely doesn't work that way for me <laughs> <laughs> at my job. <laughs> Where you're like, I'm a genius. Yeah, if it works the <laughs> first time, this. if I program something and it works the first time, I've definitely done something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrifying thought. <laughs> um, is the fishing rod your favorite? So far, yeah. Um, I built it. It took me about... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I wasn't as fast as Jake, and I, I took regular breaks. I like how while you're doing it, there's a screen that pops up and says, "Hey, you're about to do something really tricky. You should probably take a break." Every time I told me to do that, I literally took a break. I was like, "All right, I'm going to go chill I out said, for a bit." Screw this! I'm keeping going. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it probably took me about an hour and a half to build the fishing rod, and that one I think was estimated 90 minutes. Yeah. So the, mm. the piano will take me about two hours. So that was 90 minutes of that. And then I was intending to go build the next one, but I ended up having so much fun with a fishing rod, I ended up playing it for about four hours afterwards. <laughs> and that just the game that came with it? Just, just the fishing game that and came with that? it. And how that? Was, that, was, that was a heap load of fun. Um, I was <laughs> playing it because I basically just taken over to my parents and um, I was building it with my dad. And we just kept taking turns and basically arguing over the best way, the best technique on fishing. And basic. <laughs> so, so the way it is, is you're on a boat, obviously, and... Like you roll down the crank, which lowers the fishing line, and you basically go through different layers of the ocean, so you can tell that you're in like near the top because there's sunlight, and then slowly the sunlight goes away, and then you see rocks and coral, and then you go through a crack in the ground, and then you're underground, like that's where all the anglerfish are. So you go yep. all the way down to the bottom of the sea, and basically the further down you go, the more difficult the fish get, and obviously the longer it takes for you to reel it back up. And the whole mechanic is is that you wait for the fish to bite, and then at the point that it bites, you yank on the the toy con rod mm-hmm. to to like I to guess hook the fish. To hook the fish, yeah. and then the the basic technique I was doing, which was to yank the rod up high to lift the fish up, then lower the rod and then reel in the slack, mm-hmm. and yep. then pull it up mm-hmm. lower and reel in the slack. So like fishing. Is that real fishing? <laughs> yeah, but you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like I'm you pulling just the ropes that. pulling. Yeah. But you're actually watching it. You're watching what the fish does. So what you have to do is you have to be watching the fish for when it tries to swim away. Mm. And as it tries to swim away, you have to like unreel the line and reduce the slack because if there's too much tension, the string will snap. So it's just a mad rush of you Mm. pulling it up. And there are bigger fish like swordfish and shark and stuff like that. And the bigger fish, the easiest way to catch them is to catch a smaller fish and then use the smaller fish as bait. (laughs) And that's real tough because while you're using it as bait, you have to keep the fish under control, basically Mm. maintaining it. So it's a whole Hmm. balance of pulling it up and letting it down, pulling up and letting it down. And um, when you bring it up above the water, there's another cool little game thing where it takes a picture of the fish 
but the way it takes the picture is you have to slap the fish on the screen of the switch. Huh. You so a lot you of it. Slap it? The fish. Yeah, yeah. So like you what? pull it up ag- into the water and then you like pull the rope towards you and then the fish swings into the screen. <laughs> <laughs> And go smack, yep. and that's the picture that gets taken, wow. and then that gets put onto a board a- yep. along with the the type of fish that you caught, the length of the fish and the weight, and there's like different records for every fish. Yep. And a lot of it is basically, oh yeah, that was a big fish, that was a long fish, and I got the perfect picture because mm. a lot of the time you can like smack the fish off yep. screen and then you get nothing. Um, <laughs> is there a um, online leaderboard? Uh, nope, no, it's all local, mm. um, but it's it's just something great to play like with multiple people because you know I just I try and pull a fish up i'd snap it i'd start swearing profusely and getting really angry and then i have to give it over and someone else had to try and like give me the fucking rod back i want to wow. wanna... <laughs> but it was it was great yep does this uh Severin, does this make you want it <laughs> no have you actually been fishing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not fun it's not like fun real, real fishing yep i i enjoy casting out the line and this seems very restrictive it's like always kind of Aiming your rod straight in front of you. Oh yeah, yep. It, so I in, guess in that's that one thing it's missing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> what What about you? <laughs> have you played fishing? No, I haven't. Not yet. Okay. okay. Uh, what have you played? Literally just the piano and the RC car. Okay. I haven't had time to make anything else, unfortunately. What are you gonna make, ne- make next? I really don't want to make the house, so I'll probably do Why the fishing. Why don't you like, want to make the house? I don't know. It just seems like you've got a square thing and you're shoving like corks into it and i don't know it's just not that interesting yeah just i'm sure it'll be great when i make it yeah and everything but the fishing seems more appealing than the house at the Mm. moment fishing rod was definitely easier to make the house was was quite a long time interesting um now another game came out this week god of war not to be confused with god of war which is a different game (laughs) um uh Severn, yep. As I understand it, you were pretty excited for this game. Uh, yeah, was I? <laughs> <laughs> I would say you were moderately excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, did you get it? Yeah. Um, and I've been playing it. And, and it's like, Jake and Ryan also got it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jake's finished it. Yep. Finished it. That was quick. Well, I did the main story. I'm going back and doing all side stuff. Okay. Cool. What do you think, Severn? It's good. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I don't. Time? I don't think I've sunk as many hours as other people, but okay. um, it's it's cool. I like what they did with the franchise, and yeah, it's, it's everything I've seen so far. I've enjoyed. Um, Jonathan at work mm-hmm. made favorable comparisons to Zelda Breath huh? of the Wild. He said it was um, as good as or better than Zelda Breath of the Wild, and he also said that there were a lot of like parallels to it. Didn't Jonathan say it was the Best game he's ever played. Yes, he said it was the best game he's ever played. That's now very high. Yeah, very high. Very high praise. Um, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Jake, have you played Zelda? Yes. Okay. Um, so Jake and Ryan, you've both played. I think we're like. I was thinking yesterday. I think me and Jake play a lot of the same games. Yeah, we do. And watch a lot of the same shows and go and watch a lot of the yeah, same you're, movies. Yeah, you're pretty and... much the same person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um. So you you guys are probably the only authorities, uh, at least in this room, who can definitively say which you enjoyed more between Zelda and. Do you want to go right into that? I do. I'm. I want to. Go yeah, right into because that. you're you're all about Zelda. Well, <laughs> I I want to try God of War. Mm. Um, but Zelda. I've been playing Zelda on hard mode, with no UI. Oh um, wow, that'd be cool. And it's it is super super fun. How how do you tell how many hearts you've got? Oh, it's uh, the it hearts are the, the only heart yeah, oh, those, okay. that's the only mm-hmm. UI that's really on there. That and um like the the shrine sensor, the little yeah. beepy thing. Yeah. Those and the stamina, things. right? Stamina wheel still there? Stamina wheel still yeah, oh, that's okay, still there as well. Yeah. Um but you don't have map, you don't have temperature, you don't have like sound or anything. Temperature you kind of don't need because you can tell when you're cold anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, so that goes, that was a that was a thing for me because I I played the whole Zelda. My first game was mm-hmm. with the UI off, so I don't know what the game looks like with the UI on. Right. And I had no problems with that. It was great. Mm. And I also did the same with Horizon, and that was great because everything was either not super important or it was shown to me in a proper way. But God of War also has an immersive option, which I turned on immediately because the first thing I did was like, okay, how can I make this difficult for myself? Yep. 
Turn off UI. <laughs> Before you started playing, how can I make this harder? Um, turned off auto aim. And I didn't play on the hardest difficulty, but I played on the second hardest. Mm. I got a fair way into it and decided that it was too easy. So I restarted the game on the hardest difficulty. God, yeah. Um, <laughs> Holy shit. Which was more of an appropriate challenge for me. And I've been enjoying it a lot. But I basically spent on one day about five hours, maybe four, four to five hours on the same encounter. And that's why I don't play on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that, <laughs> wasn't, that was not the problem. That was not the problem yeah. the whole time. I found the problem was me turning off the UI. Right. Like having the immersive mode on. So tell me, um, in that instance, what was the vital information you were missing? So in Zelda and Horizon... Well, obviously, like we said, with, with Zelda, it still shows you the hearts. Yeah. So you can still see that. In Horizon, the red border on the outside is very indicative of where you are on the 100 to 0% scale. On God of War, the only time I would see the red flare seemed to be when I was in absolute critical, mm. which, because any two hits will kill me, mm. I would almost never see that. Um, so I had no idea what my health bar was at. Another thing was, um, you have these health stones in the game that recover your life. Uh, I assumed that they were all the same because they all look the same. They're all the same size. And I was like, cool. Um, and I asked my girlfriend, because she's playing as well, how much they healed her roughly. And she said half life to full life. And I was like, okay, cool. So I did that. But after I turned the UI on, I realized that basically some of them heal you like half your life and some of them heal you basically nothing. And I was like, this mm. is super mm. frustrating mm. because... I was doing all sorts of things in that five-hour encounter, like breaking up all the health stones and rationing them out, assuming that they were oh, all right, the same and quantity. Just you a fra- and they were giving fraction. me nothing. And I'd, yep. sometimes I'd heal and take another hit and be fine. And sometimes I'd take a hit, heal, and then get one shot straight away. And I'm like, this is super confusing. Also, I had the um, ultimate mode on the whole time, like ready, and I didn't know that. I tried what is it. Ultimate mode. So he basically he has this rage bar that fills up. Oh, okay. Spartan, Spartan rage. rage. And, oh, yeah, um, you yeah. can activate it, and he goes basically bonkers got a um, war mode yeah and um i tried it in the first hour and it didn't work um presumably because i had a bad key combination and for the next four hours i assumed i didn't have it so i was basically barreling <laughs> and i had this whole routine like one of the great things about playing on the hardest mode is i've got about 12 routines at least in my head that i can recall yeah um but no as soon as i turned the ui back on all of this information i was like oh man like this was not obvious at all. Mm. And then I beat the encounter almost straight away after oh. after I turned it on. And basically, it's been easy for me, easier for me ever since. Did you ever play Dark Souls? No. You should probably play Dark Souls. Yeah. Maybe. Why? Um, I played Bloodborne, it, and that want... was oh, super yeah. depressing. Yeah. <laughs> well, so okay, I think I don't need Dark Souls. It's pretty much the same, so yeah. How are uh, you finding God of War? Uh, it's good. Um, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like it so much. In the first week, mm. partially because the my progress was so slow. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was frustrating. I actually enjoyed, like that's one thing about this game. I actually enjoyed losing over and over again, whereas other games I found myself super frustrated. What mm-hmm. do you think the difference was there? Why did you enjoy losing in this versus other games? Uh, the telegraphing in this game for the animations yeah. is very good. Um, for a boss fight, it would take me less than a minute to recognize the moveset. And um, after a few deaths or so, I'm pretty much 100% know the, the entire encounter, yeah. basically. And the great thing was, even though I was dying all the time, I knew exactly what I was doing wrong, and I was just building up a routine. So like every fight that I was doing bad at, I just incrementally over the half hour or to hour to how long it took yeah. me, is just I would have an exact routine from start to finish on how I was going to beat it, and I would just keep replaying that routine over and over, making small changes wherever necessary. Mm. It's until it worked and that was a heap load yeah. of fun for me right. mm-hmm. it was a heap load of fun it was <laughs> like it, there were some random bits where you had to like um i guess adapt when things didn't work exactly the same but the majority of it was deterministic so i could i could recognize exactly what was coming and just it was cool it was really cool <laughs> <laughs> it was like choreography i was yeah. doing a dance routine in every fight that's exactly what i was doing you it played, was so um, good you played cuphead right not yet Oh, okay. If it comes on Switch, it'll be a definite buy. But it's on PC as well. Yep. But I'm like basically, I live on my Switch now. <laughs> that is so. That let's talk about that a little bit. 
Um, I, we'll get back to God of War, but I'm curious. You, for a while, you were very hardcore into PC games, right? You're playing. Uh, yeah, like I, was, I was definitely Stardew Valley towards. and uh, Factorio yep. and Farming Simulator. Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. And then you, um, I we had been talking about Nintendo games on the podcast. You I remember you telling me this, uh, and you said I convinced you to buy a Switch because of like positive comments I'd made about Nintendo. And now you basically exclusively play Switch. Pretty much. I I have not played a game on my PC since I got my Switch. So why is that? The convenience of it. Just like, the fact that it's there and you can turn on instantly and play whatever you want? Yeah, just the whole, like, so for on PC, if you're playing a game and you don't want to play it anymore, you just you turn it off. And it's it's an investment to turn on the PC, log in, open the game, and play it. So right. that, that, was a, that was a barrier for me. Whereas the Switch is, it's on my desk at work. If yep. I'm compiling, I just press the power button, and it's exactly where I had it. It's just snapshotting exactly where I was. And being able to carry it anywhere was, was a big deal. Right. Um, and the PlayStation is sort of okay, and I'm playing it, because that's at least in the living room where like, I'm still interacting, and you know the dog's there, and I'm not locked up in like, my bedroom doing nothing sort of thing so okay and also i've been saving a lot on power since i got my switch <laughs> <laughs> what noticeably noticeably wow really noticeably noticeably again because once i started playing my playstation again my power's gone up whoa it's crazy is that just because you're now like you've got a power on not the console but also the tv like there's just more devices yep. in use at yep. that point and, and the, the the playstation of it obviously uses up more power by itself anyway and the pc like, I've, I've got like i don't know it's not using it but um, like you do charge your switch at work. Yep. So that probably <laughs> you're just moving your power burden over to yep. <laughs> but ev- even then, um, like you, you have to imagine that like the wattage on the switch has got to be a lot less than a PC and a 21 by nine ultra wide monitor yep. or a PS4 pro and a 4k. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 55 inch television. Mm. Um, brag about them, them inches. I did just get a new TV. <laughs> I got an, I got a new TV on it. Saturday. Tell me about it. So, <laughs> Last, I'm so glad I did it. I'm, I'm so glad I did it because brought this last up. week I came back after the first week in that God of War came out and I was like, I don't know why people like this game. Yep. <laughs> it's it's not that fun. The combat was a lot of fun, but everything else in the game, I was like, this is just dumb mm. and it seems dated mm. and it doesn't even look that good. Like everyone oh, was like, man, this looks amazing. On. And I'm like, look at the trailers. I'm like, yeah, the trailers look great. But then when I was looking at the game and I was like, what part of this actually looks good? Like the only thing that I could tell that actually looked good was, oops. Was <laughs> <laughs> was um, Kratos' skin was really great, mm. and white. the detail on the specific s- static meshes that were in the game, mm. everything else was kind of bland. Like the water was awful, and a lot of the te- like the tiling Seems textures, like right mod, <laughs> nah, sorry, mod, moss or mud, mm-hmm. all of those things, those those look quite poor, mm. and. Like the foliage and stuff, I could, I could see where ferns were just basically just a mesh that was all moving uniformly and just little things. I was like, man, this, this, this game looks good, but it doesn't look amazing in any regard. Um, You've been playing and Switch then games, you, right? Then you got your TV. <laughs> <laughs> then yep. you got your TV. But, but, so, so the thing is, is that like the Switch, I'm accepting the cost okay. of the way it looks for the price I see of saying. convenience. Yeah. Whereas when I'm playing a game that's like supposed to be definitive PlayStation 4 exclusive mm-hmm. and everyone's raving about it and I hear that it gets a 95 on Metacritic and it's supposed to be the highest rated PS4 game of all time, that's what I'm expecting mm. and I wasn't seeing it. What game have you played that did like have graphics that blew your Horizon looked really good to me. Horizon did look pretty good. Um, uh, dude, they had problems. They had problems with... <laughs> With the faces, obviously. <laughs> yep. I played Horizon again oh, this wait, morning. You were just talking to about the lip syncing? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I played Horizon again this morning just to compare. Mm. And um, I was a little bit mistaken on how, how good I thought Horizon looked. But there was a lot of things that Horizon did do better. Mm. Um, the armors in Horizon is much better because there's a lot more physics mm. and a lot more variety. So when she's running around, her hair's all over the place, her armor's all over the place. It looks good as she's running. Whereas with Kratos, at least with the set I had, there was like one leather flap. That moved with physics, and everything else was static, mm. basically. Kratos and doesn't have hair, though, so you can't really mm. compare that. But he's got that beard, yo. Yeah, he's got the beard. <laughs> um, Other I can't beard see physics? it. The, the game really doesn't like me looking at his face. Like, <laughs> I have to be out of combat, 
and basically idle to look at it. Yep. Um, and the few times I have seen him talk while he's facing me has not been super great. And I had that thing I noticed where I'm wearing a metal chest plate right now and I'm watching him row mm. and his back, the metal is yep. stretching mm. across yeah. his back. And I'm like, oh, yep. gross. That's almost <laughs> every game yeah. though. Like, we have that. Yeah, but I thought we'd be better yeah. by now. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. We but anyway, yeah. I got this I got this TV. <laughs> you expected yeah, more from so. like the greatest <laughs> PlayStation game of all time. Right? I got this TV <laughs> and I put it in. Tell me about this TV, man. And I was fucking mind blown. <laughs> so yeah. I got, so I had a, uh, I had a 4K TV. Yep. It was 50 inch, but it was a couple of years old, so it doesn't have HDR on it. Yep. Oh. Right. Oh shit. Yep. And it would have been uh, an LED, but it would have been one of those like LCD ones, and the brightness wasn't wasn't too great. Yeah. Zero nits, bro. Yeah. So <laughs> I got I got this one, which is um, a Sony Bravia 55 inch. So it's about five inches bigger. Yep. The difference is considerable. Do you know the model, bro? Oh man! Uh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> right, he's got it. We don't, don't, need, don't, don't need to know it. <laughs> anyway, it's like, oh, that's from this factory. No, you don't want that. Factory. You want the, you want the single o- factory. Is it, <laughs> is it an OLED? Uh, it is not an OLED. Okay, cool. I was not going to spend that much money. Yep. Who's your quality checker? Was it number fifty-seven? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's a good guy. Though. <laughs> um, but it does have so it is still LCD, but it's got the LEDs where the LEDs are distributed throughout the screen, not on the edges. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's supposed to be better for uh, colors and brightness and lighting and reducing contrast issues. So it's obvi- it's not as good as OLED for certain, but it's um, it's getting there. And I, I basically just didn't want to spend more than $2,000 on a TV. Yeah, because when I looked at TVs, wasn't it like if you got something with OLED, it was like... Multiple an, grand. Yeah, yeah. An extra like well, two grand or something. Hold on. Like OLEDs aren't fantastic turns out like the thing that will supersede them <laughs> yeah is this thing called micro LEDs. oh yeah but what about the thing that will supersede that <laughs> micro leds well the mini, thing that will mini supersede leds that. like maybe i should just oh, wait till that comes around <laughs> what, you what, about that too? <laughs> what about the led type c <laughs> <laughs> it'll be micro oled yeah, yeah. i remember like years ago they were talking about bacteria would replace leds in tv oh yeah man that's what oled is is it or, really organic leds oh yeah oh gross do you have to feed it like yeah, you, still you, you feed it power. <laughs> yeah, you throw some fish food in your TV. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like where the world is going. All right, I've, I've tried to explain to other people how good HDR is. Was it fantastic? It was, it was, was it noticeable? I don't know if it's only the HDR. Mm. But the change was magnitudes more significant than I thought it would be. I love playing God of War because of like the HDR. Mm. You know, as soon as you push through a door and it's just like blinding white light That's or cool. like there will yeah, be an energy cool. beam. Oh, that's real cool. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And like the character silhouette will actually blur out because the the light is so bright. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> there but was, is, there that, was... is that not just like a, it's not specific to HDR though, right? HDR is supposed to be just like a higher, a, a wider it's, color gamut, right? Yeah. It's just mm. like you've got better contrast. Yeah. yeah. It's better contrast. contrast. And, that, and that was, that was insane. The, the amount of color differences that you could see. Like as, as soon as I opened up just the menu. Mm. Where you could, I could just see Kratos' back in his armor. Like the differences between colors were just staggering. Yep. And all the things I had complaints about just suddenly went away. Mm. I have no more problems with the water. I have no wow. more problem with the giant worm. I have no more problem with tidal protection. Oh shit! The Earth. <laughs> Everything serpent? is incredible now. Like so, when I was playing on a normal TV, you would yeah. see the giant world serpent, and I'd like row right up to it, and I'm like, "This is garbage. Like this looks like hot garbage right now." Come on, and then man. I row past again. On HDR say, without amazing. even looking out for it. And I'm like, holy fuck, is this the same worm? Holy <laughs> shit, dude. This is way better. Like, yeah. so much better. I could not believe it. Yep. Interesting. It, it matters, yo. Okay. I was wondering why you were complaining the other day about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, running around in the caves. It's pretty early on. Like, this this mountain. And you light up these, like, blue crystals. Yep. Holy shit. It yeah, looks so good, man. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're down there for, I don't know, an hour. And as soon as you get out, it's you're in the mountain blinding it it reminded me of like watching lord of the rings in there in the mines of moria for a yeah. bit and then as soon as they come out everything's overblown mm-hmm. it's, it's that contrast right okay. it's awesome just you just pick up the crystals and he'd be carrying it on his shoulder mm-hmm. yep and you could just see the translucency in in the crystal mm-hmm. that's and the the like the blues and you can see like specks in the middle of the crystal of yep. where there's like 
that subsurface irregularities. Scattering. It's refreshing, actually. Oh. <laughs> and just you could just see the glow of the crystal on his shoulder and his neck. Yep. Okay. So I've got a lot of appreciation for that because I worked on a blue crystal for work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks nothing <laughs> like that blue crystal looks badass. And there's like this crack on the side. Yeah. And you know that the artist was like, they'll see this. <laughs> and they just made it like right there. Nice. Well, you know what to do for next time then. So put, put a crack right yeah, there. All right. <laughs> Here's the important question. What's better, Zelda or God of War? God of War by far for me. I, I still think Zelda's better. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. In, in a right. way. There, there are aspects that, like, I can, I can see what Jonathan was talking about with parallels. And there are parallels that God of War does better. Like what? I kind of want to say the puzzles are better. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. Um, <laughs> the, and the, most think... of them are centered around your returning axe, right? No. No. Okay. No, it's it's very not the case. The, There's some cool shit, man. I thought it would all be around the sex too, but mm, I, I just got some cool shit. Okay. And they do have puzzles that repeat like Zelda does, but the amount of work they put in to make the puzzles varied and different every time you come across it is amazing. Yeah. Okay. I would say each puzzle. Like, it's the same. You have to get the three runes or whatever. They're not all that, though. Yeah, yeah I know. But, like, it's it's very different from one situation to another where Zelda's just like, Here's a rock. Yes. Find the gap. Yeah. Put the rock down. <laughs> oh, What's you're that? It's a tree stump. The, there's, um, a, there's a thing in the tree stump. You punch yeah. it, it's a seed. The Korok seeds, basically, is what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yes, there, there's a lot of repetition amongst them. Um, to me, the puzzle is getting to them. The puzzle is like finding this place, these places in the world where the seeds are hidden. Um, I but, thought they were just more of a, here's a little reward for, yeah. for, for climbing this mountain. Yeah. Going out of your way. There, there are some way. that are literally like, Climb a mountain, lift up a rock. There's yeah. rock seeds. But you're, those, like, those for me, my, my goal was just to get to the top of a mountain and be like, yeah. I want to get to the top, not because I think there's anything up there, because I just want to get to the yeah. top. Oh, and then, then oh, there's rewarded. a rock. Oh, well, I got a thing. <laughs> it got to Love point it. where it was seriously annoying me, where I'd be like climbing over a mountain, I look down, and then there's a rock spiral. I'm like, of course there's a fucking rock spiral. <laughs> and then I go all the way down there to finish the puzzle. Mm-hmm. like, wait, good for me. And then I have to climb all the way back up again. Or I'd be along a mountain, and then I'd look it up a peak. <laughs> no, because I want I want more inventory slots. I want more inventory slots. Okay. And I look up at a peak, but there... and I'm like, I bet there's a fucking Korok seed up there. And you go up there, and there's just a pebble on the ground. And you're like, yep, pick it up. Cool, there's my Korok but, seed. And I was like, you... this isn't a puzzle. You don't have to. There's so many Korok <laughs> seeds. This is not a puzzle. That you can That's... end up with more than enough inventory yeah. space just from just passively. Yeah, so I stopped doing them. Yeah. That's not fun. I just like, oh, here's another <laughs> magnet puzzle. Middle finger, carry on. So now you're just exploring for exploring's fun. Yeah. I wasn't exploring. I just carry on with my own thing. And then I'd see that and I'd be like, I'm going to ignore the shit out of that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Whereas the, the God of War ones are basically, they're not all the, the, the mechanics aren't unique every time. Although there are a wide variety of mechanics, but it's just the level design that makes them very different. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You've, uh, you've completed it. Yes. How was the scale of this freaking game? Because some people, uh, a lot of people have said the scale is ridiculous. Every time I do something yeah. while playing the story, I think, okay, sweet, I must be getting near the end. Yeah. Or like, oh, sweet, there's an area got over there that I'm going to unlock later. And then I'll, something will happen, then I'll come back and I'll be like, well, shit, there was a lot more in this area than I thought. Yeah. And then it happens two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, I've, like, I've finished the game and I'm going back and doing these side things. And I know I noticed that when I was exploring the first time, there's like four or five big doors that I didn't go through, and they've obviously got unlock consoles. I guess is what you call them yeah. in front of them. There's no quest or anything telling me to go there, yep. but I'm going to go there and try and figure out what's there. But it's just there's just a lot more than it looks like mm. than it initially looks. It's right. So you, you're passing through these areas, thinking, "Oh, there's some cool little secrets," but you're actually you, there's a ton of stuff you're not even noticing yes. necessarily. Yeah. That's interesting. Definitely. There, there were a few cases where I was like, "Oh, here's a little cave. I'll just go get the treasure in here and carry on." Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I'd poke my head in, and then just see this big giant fucking level on the other side, and be oh, like, wow. "Yeah, no, I'll come back later." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that looks like a lot. <laughs> but, and, and the quality, like you can't, it 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 looks incredible. Like every freaking asset has been tailored. Um, yeah, you're talking specifically from an art standpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's it's got all the treatment. It's all the bells and whistles of like yeah. the AAA studio. I mean those. Those games have always pushed the boundaries visually for Sony. God of War? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember God of War 3? Was that the one that was like, you fight on Zeus's back or something crazy? I just remember... Not Zeus's back. Kronos's Kronos's back. Maybe, sure. Yeah. Whatever it is. 
someone's <laughs> back. And it's just like enormous and gorgeous. Yeah. Like it was by far the best looking game that had come out to yeah. that point in time. Um, and it's, it looks to me like God of War. What do we call this? It's not. Is it just God of War? I think it is. It's God it's of War 2018. God of War. I just I hate that. Come Why? On. Because there's already a God of War, and it's a different game. <laughs> it's like calling the next Mario game Super Mario. I mean, it's like it's like calling <laughs> it's like calling the next Xbox Xbox One when there were already uh, was no, an Xbox no, One. No, it's not. Oh yeah, no, it's more like calling it Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Xbox. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's okay. I think it's making it clear that it's a reboot. Not not necessarily a continuation, but it's like, not it even a, a reboot. It is a it sequel. Is a reboot. Yeah. No, this no. takes place it was more after like the a... events of Gods of War one, yeah, thought, two, yeah, and yes, three. Yes, but you would like okay. So for example, like the new Doctor Who series, you would call that a reboot, even though it is a continuation. No, they call it they call it a soft reboot. So it's still part. It still <laughs> maintains the, the like. Slice. No, this is a thing. It. They call it. I know okay. it's a thing. That's a what, that's what I hate. I hate that they call but it. But the thing is, is that you are not required to play the previous God of Wars to play this one like you don't yeah, need to care yeah, yeah. at all well I, that's that's yeah. that's beside the point yeah. you don't it's need not, to it's have not seen... a direct sequel but well... it's not a full <laughs> reboot because it's not erasing the stuff that kratos did in the past uh, no it's not erasing it's a soft it reboot. it's it's not uh, uh, why are you laughing like but this it's... is what they call it i know that's what they call it i hate that that's what they call it's it it's not really it's... built upon the previous ones uh... <laughs> But the history is more. still there. Kratos still did all those hey, things he did. Did you in see the... Star Trek: The Next Generation? It's a soft reboot of Star Trek. It is a soft reboot. Oh, I just <laughs> it is a soft I reboot. Hate that. No. What would, you, what would you call it? It's just a. It's a separate series. <laughs> if you want to call it, but here's the thing. At least they had the the. At least they didn't call it Star Trek. Did no, you see Star it Trek? Next Generation. It's, it's it takes place yeah, yeah. after Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well yeah. they don't even call the original Star Trek Star Trek. It's Star Trek TOS, right? The original series. Oh, I guess it is now, but yeah. it, it was just called Star Trek when yeah. it came out. It, do you call God of War God of War the original God of War? Well, I think I think <laughs> yes. where Star Trek where Star Trek is different is that they've always had Star Trek and then a second title, the Next Generation, Voyager, Deep yeah. Space Nine. Uh, no, they didn't always have that. They had that after Star Trek. Yeah, after Star Trek, <laughs> the first one. Yes. Because they didn't need it. <laughs> right. What was the first movie called? I mean, like, the reboot movie called. <laughs> that was a Star Now, is that the soft though, reboot, or is that the... <laughs> that is a soft oh, reboot. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is, because it can... T- I'm, I'm so angry <laughs> like this term. is not a problem at all. I know it's not. It's a, it's <laughs> it, a problem Nick has with words. It is so... F- it's so you just, silly. You just they... don't like the word soft, do you? He I mean, I have hard. nothing wrong with the words... <laughs> or no, reboot, my which my is, issue which is calling it... I. Well, I, it's the combination of soft reboot. If you Squishy te- reboot. If you sell... Okay, okay. Pretend I'm someone who doesn't speak English. Yep. And I'm learning English. All right. How do you explain what soft reboot means? I mean, it's pretty clear. It's like a soft... It's not self-evident. Reboot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but more importantly, why didn't they just call it God of War 4? Yep, good point. Like, why... They could have called it God of War and then something... Yes, they could have, I mean, they've done that before. <laughs> they've they've put. God, I hate that term. Um, they've put like titles after the name. Yeah. My biggest issue is now that there are there, there are now two God of War games, and that is yeah. so. But the, so this is, dumb. The, there has been in recent years a thing of this of doing soft reboots for things. Like, but when is this ever going to be an actual problem? Like, it's when is everyone going to get problem. confused? <laughs> Okay. By which God of War you're talking about? Like, is this, this is never this. going to be a problem when for is, anyone? Is ever. the first God of War now available on the PlayStation Network? It's the first God of War. <laughs> Just is it, is it, is it available on the PlayStation Network? I don't know. Uh, the not remastered the trilogy, maybe, is that a thing? Um, you can get the th- you can get the third one currently. Okay, yeah. so if they ever release the first one, mm-hmm. and you want to buy God of War, it'll, it'll probably be labeled <laughs> God of War Original. <laughs> It'll be a God of War original pack or something. Well, you be, won't be able well, to buy it. Be like God of War twenty eight. Who's no one's gonna play that game anymore anyway? Like I've already seen the remastered God of War. I'm like I don't want to play that. I don't want to play the third one. Why would I want to play the first one? Okay, ten years from now, <laughs> I bought it like a month when they release God of War. <laughs> <laughs> And there's three God of Wars. That won't happen. This, this is not a problem. I would, I would yeah. have said this that won't not happen for two God of Wars. You have an Wars. imaginary Nick, problem. I think you're just nitpicking. No, nah, this is dumb. Question. The game is really good. I'm sure the game is lovely. That the the naming they've chosen is silly. They they should I to me it's it's going to cause problems down the line. It it's it just will cause silly zero and problems. I yeah. I don't think it will. Not really. 
Okay. It won't really cause problems. You, I, it'll, you might be right. it'll cause enough we'll of a see. problem where Found someone will say, what do we call this on the PlayStation <laughs> store? <laughs> and then someone will say, just call it what, such and such, and then that's it. And then they go, well, now we have to copyright that separately. Well, I think I think the new God of War is all in caps. So, like, uh, you could oh, have the other one. <laughs> that'll do it. There you go. But also, oh. like, dude, they... It's not all text now. Like, they'll put an image of yeah. the new God of War. No one's, yeah, no one is. Like, if you accidentally went online and bought, oh, my God, the new God of War is only, okay. like, 10 bucks. Okay. This I, is I, I want to read about the making of the original God of War yeah. on Wikipedia. No, actually, what, what you, do I look up? God of War, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, God of War, because it'll have all of them. <laughs> what, actually, what, I know what you're actually worried about is this, like, Mothers or grandmothers going into a store and oh, saying, wow. oh, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my grandson, he really <laughs> likes the God, God of, of War. <laughs> That'll never be a problem either. Yeah. Because which cool grandma is buying their kid son? I don't know. God of War, this M-rated game. Sure there's some very <laughs> yeah. cool grandmas out okay, there. Uh, get Grand Theft Auto while she's at it as well. <laughs> a cool grandma. A cool oh, yeah. grandma. Oh, shit. A rapping granny. A rapping granny. Yeah. Do you think a store clerk is going to be like, you know what? You want God of War? I'm pretty sure. I she think I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you saying. must be talking yeah. about the original yeah. or no, or PlayStation maybe she just Two, whatever God of War. Maybe she just looks and she's like, <laughs> "Let oh, me go look that up." Goes on, the on trade me or stock. eBay or yeah, whatever. Yeah, she goes on eBay or she just walks into the store and just goes to the bargain bin for some reason. It doesn't look like go, oh, here it is, God well, of War. She's only got. She's on a pension. She can't yeah. spend a t- 120 dollars. Yeah, yeah, but she can't. She gets spend the 15 dollar God of War. Like, here we go. This is it. I'd be stoked if my grandma bought me the original God of War. Save you from having to die. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't know what I'd run it on. <laughs> just put it on your yep. shelf and look yeah. at it. I don't know. I just think it's silly. Anyway, though, but you wanted you did ask us before <laughs> is, about like, the level design really thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, some background. Um, uh, I, at Monday lunch, Jonathan and Mike, two people we work with, were telling me how Flawless. amazing God of War is. And... Um, they were saying that like they did some level design thing that was just crazy and they wouldn't really tell me what it was. I think they wanted to save me from spoilers, which is totally kind of them. But I don't know that this is necessarily going to like ruin my enjoyment of the game. So why don't you guys explain to the spoilers for anybody who's like wanting to play God of War and hasn't. But tell me what the deal is on that. Okay. Yeah. So you, it's going to be this is this spoilers here. Yep. Um, this is a spoiler section. Um, it's a trailer spoiler. Though, yeah, right? trailer spoiler, I guess. I didn't watch okay. the trailer. So if you've seen the trailer, then you, you already know what this is. Yeah. Okay. He's got okay so you get to this lake, and it's like, there's a lot of stuff around the lake. So you, well, when I first got there, I went right around the lake, did everything I could ex- before going to the main quest. Yeah. And then something happens in the story, and then the lake lowers. Mm. And then there's a whole nother level of stuff all oh, wow. around the lake. That's cool. Even and unlocking areas you couldn't get to before and that you could see. And then this happens... Well, a well, well, few well, times so, more. Hold on a minute. Is this is this lake actually an open cast mine? That well, got what happens up? is the worm, the the world serpent, is like blocking off sections, so it's actually holding the water in it. Yeah. And as it moves, mm. the water displaces. Huh. Yeah. He's, I was he's, trying to avoid using the word world serpent. <laughs> oh, he's, a, he's yeah. a big cork. But yeah. he, he's he's early. I don't. I don't think. Yeah. Shit. Nah. Shit. Uh, again, that's that's a trailer spoiler. Yeah. But so this, you already know. It's like. Because I every time I went back and every time the the water dropped, I would go back around the entire lake trying to find new stuff. That's yeah, cool. and then it just kept happening, and I and then like I've got to a point where it's just like there is so much stuff in this wow. one tiny little area, mm. and it's like it's just crazy. I was I was blown away by it. Why is there so much stuff there? I it's just all below the lake. Uh, I, yeah. You imagine that that's what it was. No, I mean, like in the, the fiction of the world, why does oh, one lake seem there, to hold all this stuff? There used to be a city there. Oh, um, that's neat. And there's remnants of the city. Yeah. Um, um, is this the one? Is Are there any other locations in the game that have a similar thing going on, or is it just primarily this lake? I would say it's primarily this lake. But there, are, there are some areas that you go to that are affected by that water level that's drop. Cool. That's cool. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I need to go back. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Um, it, you would have seen it. I'll tell you after. Here, okay, here's my question. Um, could you, for example, save all of the side content until you've beaten the main quest? Yes. And just do it all at once? Technically, yes. Okay, cool. Def- probably definitely easier to do during each phase. Yeah. Can Kratos swim? No. No. You that was, he doesn't look like a swimmer. That was one thing that annoyed you know, me at the beginning of the game, and this was tied with the water looking terrible when I first played on my old TV mm. and the way they explained it was so the boy went to go jump in the water and Kratos was like no 
Yeah. And then the boy was like, why? And he was like, can you see what's in the water? And the boy said no. And he's like, well, don't go in it then. Well, he's also carrying like an axe around. <laughs> I swear, I feel like that would pull him down. Yeah. <laughs> or I suppose he could just. But that's good. What do you mean, pull him down? <laughs> he's <laughs> super <laughs> strong. <laughs> <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about? Have you been playing all the game? That muscle just drags yeah, muscle, him down. He'll, muscle's pretty dense. Yeah. He, he yeah, can't swim. He just walks it's on it's the bottom. It's not buoyant. Yeah. Muscle's not buoyant. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, wearing like he's, super heavy shoes. And I go He's saying he would drown. Yeah. Well, can he, though? I don't know. The fucking boat is pissing me off. It's yeah. a magic boat. It's a magic fucking boat. Why, Why, is it magic? Magic? Why is it a magic boat? Okay, so you got this boat, right? You get on it and you row around. Yep. Just a normal and then you get, rowboat, you, right? You dock it somewhere on a beach. Yep. And then you go around wherever you're going and you go to another place, another beach, and there's a boat there. And it looks like it's exactly the same fucking boat you were just on. How, how, you were like, how, I didn't come on this way. Are you sure there's not just more yeah. than one boat? No, 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 no. You get on that boat and then you go back to where your old boat is, was and it's gone. The old boat's gone. So, and there are, there are like towers that you go on where there's a dock on both sides. Mm. You get on one side, you go up, you look down the other side, there's a boat down there. You're like, oh, that's weird. And you look over and you're like, oh, your boat's still on the other side. That's weird. And like, that's, there is two boats. You've gone, there's a boat there, there's a boat there. You pick one, you go down, you row around, the other boat's gone. It's a, there's one boat. <laughs> there's, it's a god. I swear to God, it's a, yeah, it's it's a, a boat god. god. I was about to say. It's, like, <laughs> it could, it's a fucking boat god. It's the last god left that uh, Kratos hasn't killed and he's just <laughs> messing with him. I'm pretty sure there is only one boat in the entire yeah. fucking game. Magic boat, huh? Wow. Magic boat. Cool. That's what the uh, you do get undertitle should have been. God of War. <laughs> magic boat. Magic, magic boat. boat, yeah. You I go to see, other realms you, and the same boat is there. I will see this totally works, mm. dude. Um, creature design, like this is it? Is this some cool shit that you guys seen? Oh, you've played through the whole thing. You would have seen. Some I, I think the stuff. most of the creature design is better than the bosses, because there's a lot mm. of repetition on the bosses. There, mm. quite a few of the bosses are yeah. the same one reflavored. Uh, um, interesting, and because uh, that's a game that used to be very heavily focused on bosses. There, there are good boss fights. There are, but like there are some where they're like, I guess there just needs to be an epic encounter here. Mm. They'll just put the same one again, but with a different twist. You can tell that it's a soft reboot. <laughs> in, in terms God, of... That so much. Um, was, like, you, you said that the boss is a soft reboot? No, you don't go in and you like don't like mess with all the main gods or anything like that. It's kind of like Spoilers. going back to the very first game. It's like, it, you know, you, you build your way up again. You can it, tell that they've planned for more. It, it also sounds like... Because in the old God of Wars, those boss fights were very much the focus. Yeah. And that is not necessarily the focus in this game. I'd say there's a lot more focus on story than anything else. How is the story? I thought it was great. Cool. It was fantastic. Um, I mean, that, it was terrible. That first... Oh, yeah. About talking about video game stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, video game stories. Ooh. But, um... Uh. Shit, that first, that first boss fight, I... I, that really set the tone for me. I, I really enjoyed that. I don't know if they maintained that tone on the boss fights. It's it's it was a definitely big... uh, it's definitely the most memorable one. Mm. There are other good ones, but they're not as impactful. Right. Okay. I, I might have Jake's, to play more. Jake's, Jake's quiet. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's... that it's just that first fight. That first fight seems super personal. Mm. That's why I liked it. Okay. Are you fighting your son? No. No. <clears throat> You're fighting your real demons. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that yeah, was, and also yeah. real demons. <laughs> there are um, a few more personal fights throughout it. Cool. Like that, that like a very built-in and you feel really cool doing it kind of thing. I'm probably going to. But there are some cool ones. There, there are some really cool boss fights. Nick, yeah. when I let you borrow my PlayStation, I'll, I'll give you everything. Jonathan's also now got a PlayStation to lend out. So oh, sweet. I'm going to borrow his. Perfect. Yep. Clearly, this is important for our listeners to know whose <laughs> who's PlayStation I'm borrowing. Um, we're we're pretty much over time now, um, so if you've got anything left to say, anyone, I'd like to hear what more about Ryan's TV if he's got time. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Serial number, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Net rating. How many how many ports does it have? Four HDMI ports, one <laughs> optical out. Yep. Um, one Score. of the HDMI ports has. Uh, ARC on it. You got, uh, you got you Chromecast? Can send, uh, it's got Chromecast. It's it's an Android TV. Oh, so it's already... So it's got Chromecast into it. That's it's cool. got a built-in. It's got Freeview on it, which is cool. <laughs> it's free. It's a free satellite tuner. Yeah. Free, free comes Freeview. with it. 
When are you ever watching? There's a uh, Netflix it's not really button. Free if you bought the TV, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, just part of the TV. One, it's, one it's an extra expense Netflix you don't app. need. Like, oh, is that shit. free? <laughs> yeah, that's free. It's free Netflix. Do you watch any um, Freeview? For for people, Freeview is basically like our free to air. just yeah standard TV channels. I've never had a Freeview, but now that I have one, I may as well plug it in. And try. there's nothing on it. They've got ads everywhere. Just I just don't bother. <laughs> It's weird. I haven't I mean, watched like proper TV since getting Netflix. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Sometimes I find something on YouTube that was like taken from normal TV, and they, oh, yeah. they haven't edited the ads out. I'm oh, like, what is this? <laughs> what are these messages God. they're trying to tell me? I've watched some like anime every once in a while that has Japanese ads. I love watching Japanese. Oh man, ads. Japanese <laughs> ads are the best. No, I, so I have YouTube insane. Red. No more ads. Oh yeah, on any device. Yeah, it's great. All I right. think the last one was basically the guy who was like, I've got all these Lambos, but let me oh, show you my yep. bookshelves. Oh, yes, oh, I remember that guy. guy. <laughs> Lamborghini. And I was Here like, Here I am in my garage. Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. I was like, How much is uh, it, Google? How much? Oh, yeah, let, I'm going to pay that just to make this guy go away. What's his name? Ty something? Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez, yeah. Oh, what a classic. All right, we're, we're pretty much out of time. If you've got any questions, you can email us at frenzyquestions no, at gmail.com. Um, we we received a cool message which we'll probably talk about in the future. Yep. Um, we can you can also tweet at us at Front Seat Cast uh, or hit us up on Facebook facebook.com slash Front Seat Cast. We've also got a WordPress site frontseatgamer.wordpress.com and a YouTube channel youtube.com slash Front Seat Cast. Um, we want to thank Leanne for our logo. She's got a Tumblr leannebooten.tumblr.com and uh, Andrew for our music notfornothing.com that's N-A-U-G-H-T for nothing.com um, and I also want to thank Jake and Ryan for being here and of course Severna Blake for thanks for bringing your Labo generally. piano that's a good man um, yeah if you guys have anything you want to pimp out we'll probably just edit it out so Audible.com, uh, great books, yes. uh, audio books on the move. I listen to them every day. Okay. One I can well, recommend what do you, what do you is read Harry Potter at the moment. Harry Potter? Uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, definite good read. I just started uh, Oathbringer from Brandon Sanderson. Oh, really? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Real good, real good. I listened to uh, the one before that, I listened to the seventh uh, Expanse novel, you know, oh, the yeah. Expanse TV show. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on novels. Yeah. yeah, based on the novels. Yeah. Oh man, so good, so good. Highly recommend the Expanse yeah. series. I'm, I'm plowing through Harry Potter at the moment. They've got all the books on. Yeah. Narrated by Stephen Fry. Fantastic. Oh man, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's great. I listened to um, uh, what was it? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, narrated by Stephen Fry. It was oh, awesome. Yeah. He's yeah. great. This is um the book club <laughs> after podcast that. Uh, Sam, have you listened to any audio? They've been books? pitching hard for months. Um, no, not not right now. <laughs> If you go to audible.com slash front seat gamer, um, <laughs> uh, use our promo code. There's, you'll find nothing there. Um, yeah. I have a Patreon account if anyone wants to give me money. <laughs> you have a Patreon? What for? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just set it up so people could just go. Yeah. Ryan's power bill. <laughs> <laughs> it all just goes to TV yep. anyway. <laughs> That's how you got that TV, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we'll be back in a couple weeks. So, yep. See ya. Bye. It, it is dumb. I don't care what you guys think. I think it's a, a terrible, terrible oh. long-term strategy. I can't wait for, like, Zelda to come out. It's just going to be called Zelda. Zelda. And then we'll just all be laughing at Nick when he doesn't buy the game because of principles. Well, he buys the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've never had a game called Zelda. There's no game called Wait, Zelda. What's the first Zelda called? It's called The Legend of Zelda. Well, they bring out The Legend of Zelda. Like, then I'll be like, Legend of Zelda. it better be the Nintendo Entertainment one, or it better be like an exact reboot of It'll the Nintendo Entertainment. The It'll they be a soft not, reboot. If they introduce <laughs> Link's son... Then that's a different game. Like that's a fucking different game. I hopefully one day they bring out the Legend of Link. Okay, picture you're in a bookstore. Yep. yep. This is this is the biggest problem. This is like games committing to it not <laughs> hey, being. Are you recording the shit? This is games committing to not being a long term art form. No, you don't go and buy. If you went to a bookstore, I... you wouldn't buy Harry Potter. There wouldn't be two books <laughs> called Harry Potter, right?
They've all got subtitles. Oh, hold on. What about the Bible? Are you walking there like, I want the Bible. And they're like, oh, what do you want? Old Testament, New Testament? Oh, no. They've, they've, they've got a bunch of different versions of the Bible. Yeah. They've got the King James but, but Bible. They've under, got yeah. the... Which yeah. one do you want? They're they don't different. subtitle they, them. Oh. They do have different <laughs> titles. What are you talking about? Have you been to a bookstore? Of course not. They're all closed. But <laughs> my point remains... <laughs> You're committing to it being a short-term art form if you're calling it the same thing as another thing in the same product line. What are you doing? I think they just want to make money. Yeah, it's a dumb strategy. Well, it's that's, terrible. That's what I, was saying, I hate like, it. Recently, there's been like game, like like movies and games coming out that are just like like Tomb Raider, right? Like Tomb Raider is just oh. wasn't that just called Tomb Raider the first one? Yeah. And, like, yeah. There's a like I, I, I honestly the, think the, the reason of it the... like there's a reason the reason is so that people who haven't played the previous ones or have missed out on previous ones don't feel like they need to replay yeah. through the old ones they yes. haven't caught up to and that is a short point. term strategy and then that's fine I don't think it's a problem we could call it like God of War the yeah why don't they call it Kratos God of War because it doesn't matter 